Oh, Mr. Douglas, uh, your mother sent me. I am Claude of the Ritz Plaza. Oh, your mother's hairdresser. Hair stylist, if you please. Oh. <laughs> well, how did she get you to come way out here? <laughs> well, Mr. Douglas, everyone has a skeleton in their closet, and somehow your mother found mine. All she had to do was to say one word to me, Scranton. <laughs> and here I am. <laughs> what happened in Scranton? Well, uh... I don't think that's any of your business. <laughs> and now, Mr. Douglas, if you'll take me to your wife. Oh, uh, she's in Hooterville looking for a place for you to use as a beauty shop. Well, what do I need a shop for? I just came here to do your wife's hair. Didn't Mother tell you about the ladies every other Wednesday afternoon discussion club? What is that? <laughs> that is a discussion club where they need their hair done. Well, I'm certainly not going to open a beauty salon in a place like this. Scranton. <laughs> How many women are there? Oh, Mrs. Wilkins, you're drying beautifully. Oh, Mrs. Prentice, I'm sure you are dry. <laughs> How about look? Here. Oh. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> Mrs. Prentice, now you can go home. I'm afraid to move. <laughs> Lloyd, how'd you get into this? Well, I ain't quite sure. All I remember is Mrs. Douglas said to me, Mr. Smoots, darling, and then everything went black. What's wrong here? Mr. Douglas, I've brought you an angry mob. Well, I, uh, I... Oh, they're really steamed up. Care to hire a good five-dollar bodyguard? No. Well, it's just as well. I can't stand the smell of tar, and them feathers tickle my nose. <laughs> hair. Since Cora had her hair fixed, she won't fix my supper. Neither will Doris. She won't even feed the pigs. <laughs> and mine won't chop the wood. She just sits in front of the mirror all day looking at herself. Yes. Now, uh, uh, Mr. Douglas, you're a city fellow, but we have accepted you even if you do do strange things. Like what? Buying this farm. Oh, yeah. yeah, and always a sticking up for the Department of Agriculture. Sure, but there. And driving a tractor with your vest on. <laughs> Gentlemen, I just... But now you've gone too far, inflicting your city ways on us by Molly Carly and our women with that fancy hairdresser. Yeah, they're acting like city women. They just sit and do nothing. <laughs> gentlemen, gentlemen, gentlemen. I'm surprised at you. City women and farm women are exactly the same. The only difference is that the city women live in the city and the farm women on the farm. <laughs> Outside of that, you can't tell the difference unless you look at their hair. Lisa. Now, why do you think these women want to be beautiful? For you, for their husbands. So that when you come home from the farm tired, but you don't get anything to eat, but you have something beautiful to look at. <laughs> All you think of is your stomachs. <laughs> do you know what they have to go through to be beautiful? Well, I tell you. Did you ever sit under a hot dryer for three hours to have your hair electrified to be permanent it? Lisa, Please I... don't interrupt me when I'm mad. Well, I just want to translate that last speech. They understand. <laughs> Mr. Ziffer, when was it the last time that you told your wife that she was beautiful? 1929. <laughs> well, tell her again. And when was the last time you gentlemen took out your wives for dinner with their beautiful hair? Go home. Look at your wives. Make a date for dinner. Send them flowers. Buy them wine and... Well, the rest of it is up to you. I thank you, gentlemen. Maybe she's right, Fred. Well... I guess it wouldn't hurt to soft-talk Doris a little. She's been a good wife. And there ain't another woman in this valley can get along with my pigs better than Doris. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos, hit the subscribe button. If you like the video, please hit the like button. If you have something